today, and we are going to look back at our example that we uh, looked at last time. So this, uh, our first discrete Fourier transform, and we found kind of some of these critical parameters here. And you're always going to typically be asked for these parameters. So we found our total number of points in, we found our delta t, we found our period, uh, capital T, we found our sampling frequency, you know, fs is just equal to over t. I know that my period is just going to be n big n times delta t, which is going to be equal to n divided by uh, fs. And I could also know that my f Nyquist is going to be equal to fs over 2. And then I could rearrange and plug that in. So uh, I could, you know, again, I could calculate kind of all these parameters and plug in in terms of uh, you know, different things that I could be uh, give you uh, in this uh, in these problems and in these uh, this exam, I also know that my delta f is equal to one over n delta t. So I know that that is equal to uh, fs fs over n, and I could rewrite that uh, as basically if I look over here, my fs in terms of f Nyquist is going to be two f Nyquist divided by n, and so I can rewrite my terms of, uh, again, my f Nyquist. I'm just writing some definitions. We've, we've seen this before, but you might want to get n over 2 delta f. This is a nice a relationship to have. Anyways, uh, the key thing that we saw last time uh, is this delta f is 167 hertz. Now let's look at our frequency spectrum, because that's always the kind of the most important thing that we uh, kind of have. So we know that our in this x-axis, we know that this is our delta f, and this is 2 delta f, and this is 3 delta f, and this is 4 delta f, et cetera, et cetera. And then you know that this is n over 2 delta f. How do I know that? How do I know it's not n delta f? Because there's no mirror symmetry. So this must be my Nyquist frequency. This was plotted correctly. So let's go ahead and look. Um, Let's say, you know, again, I'm measuring an experimental frequency, so we know the dominant frequency, you know the lowest frequency, you know the F Nyquist, everything that you could uh, uh, want. And actually, we know that this is equal to our Nyquist. But either way, uh, let's say now we were, you know, again, DFT, usually we're measuring an unknown signal, or we're trying to kind of measure some experimental value or some experimental signal and to do something about the frequency present in the signal. Um, but now, let's say I read an article. After I did this study, and in the signal that I was measuring, there's this really critical lower frequency uh, that's located at 300 hertz, and I need to measure that frequency for my application. Did I did I measure that for my experiment? Well, I know that this is 167 hertz right here, and I know that the next is twice that. This is not going to be 300 hertz, right? So my 300 hertz sits somewhere right about, let's say it's right here. Let's say this is my frequency at 300 hertz. Did I measure harmonic coefficient, or did I measure any frequencies at 300 hertz? No, I only measured it at 167 hertz, and whatever that is times 2, and I can't do math anymore, so 167, uh, people are looking, shaming me on, uh, on the internet. 334, uh, so 334 right here. 334 hertz. So did I measure, was I able to kind of measure the component uh, or this uh, component of our, you know, the frequency that might be apparent in the signal? No, I didn't hit 300 hertz. I had, I measured a frequency at 167 and 334 hertz. So I did not. My lowest fundamental frequency is this. The next is here. So this frequency, this delta F is also called our frequency resolution. So our frequency resolution in this, ex in this example, is very, very poor. I only have frequency resolution of 167 hertz. I mean, typically, I want, you know, again, depends on your application, but I'm, I mean, I want a sub, I want like a 0 0.1 hertz uh, resolution or, <laughs> or something like that. Um, so the problem here is I can never measure with this, with this, you know, again, with this sampling frequency, with this number of points, I cannot measure this 300 hertz frequency component. So instead, I and mean, again, this signal still, uh, you know, this signal still, this frequency is still present in my signal. But the, uh, basically that contribution, so whatever this is, who knows, maybe this is my dominant frequency and it's super high. But maybe, or, you know, not maybe, but this component, some of it 
you know, this contribution of that frequency can leak into here and can leak into here. So now maybe it appears that this is my dominant frequency, but truly this may be my dominant frequency, or maybe it might not. But again, I don't know. I can only know, I only know this frequency and this frequency. And that contribution may be due to, again, this entire 167 hertz gap. So I have a 167 hertz gap where I am not measuring those individual contributions. So maybe it leaks into here, maybe it leaks into here. That's kind of the issue. It's a really, really, really critical issue. So I cannot measure that component. And it, you know, again, if you're designing an application and you think, oh, well, uh, okay, I need to stay away from 334 hertz. But in, in reality, you need to stay away from 300 hertz. So again, it's really, really dangerous, or not dangerous, but again, it can have potential, you know, catastrophic failure implications um, if you don't kind of perform this experiment correctly. But we want to know as much as we, as much as possible um, from our signal uh, before we run this experiment. And we want to basically, we want to have this delta F as low as possible. I want to be able to kind of measure as many frequencies <laughs> as I possibly can. And we just saw here that this delta F, delta F equals one over T. That equals one over N delta, uh, excuse me, delta T. And thus, my delta F is going to be equal to F sub S over N. So my sampling frequency, I need to choose that to be two times my F max. As, you know, again, we want to choose that to avoid signal aliasing. Avoid signal aliasing. That's the key thing here. So I need to avoid signal aliasing by choosing my sampling frequency to be twice the maximum frequency of my signal. So this has to be set. But now, if I want to shrink my delta F, all I have to do is just increase my number of points. So again, this is the this concept of you know, the, uh, these unknown or these kind of frequencies leaking into you know, this the, basically the, the gap between this frequency resolution. So all the frequencies in between here and here that could possibly leak into here, this is uh, this concept of spectral leaking. So very, very problematic. And again, is it really our dominant frequency? Or did it come from the contribution of this 300 hertz that we can't measure? So uh, all we have to do if we want to decrease our, if we want to increase our frequency resolution, we need to decrease our delta F, and thus we need to increase our N. I know, so many inverse relationships. Uh, so our sampling frequency, that's just picked, that's picked to avoid signal analyzing. But in order to control our frequency resolution, we need to change n. So we have a fine enough resolution. So we could find the real dominant frequency and avoid all these issues of spectral leakage that can cause ambiguity in our results. So uh, all we have to do is change delta fs. And so, for example, if I wanted to hit 300 hertz, I could choose my uh, delta f, just keep my same f sub s uh, to get a resolution of 1 hertz. So what is my f sub s? Let me go ahead. What was our sampling frequency? Oop, let me go all the way back into here. So our sampling frequency was 2000 hertz. So let's go back here. So, delta F. so our sampling frequency, so F sub S equals 2000 hertz. And so if I want to have a delta F equals 1 hertz, I need to have my N equal to 2,000. So this is a typo there. This needs to be N equals 2,000 points. That's it. So all you have to do is, and again, that comes from our, we found that our delta T spacing here. Let's go back to our example way back here. So our delta T was this 0.05, so this is my F sub S. So F sub S over N, you can hit that, I need 2,000 points in order to hit that. Uh, so we need more, many, 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 many more points. So uh, that is how you would avoid uh, this kind of concept of spectral leakage, because then my delta F would be equal to 1 hertz. If I change my N to 1,000, and I kept F sub S the same, equal to 2,000 hertz right here. And everything else kind of changes as a result of that. So what's my Nyquist frequency? Well, it'd still be F Nyquist would be equal to 1,000 hertz. Still, and then again, that is going to be equal to 
I asked minor closest n over 2, excuse me, delta f. So number of points, 2,000 divided by 2, 1,000, delta f is 1. Everything makes sense in the world. Uh, there will be some more example problems coming up, and I'll post a couple videos on this. But this idea of special leakage, again, we need to control this spacing, the spacing between our harmonics, delta f, in order to hit all the frequencies that we need to hit in our, our, our uh, signal. So again, our signal can have multiple frequencies. So I could have any arbitrary signal that has, so my signal could have a component uh, at 1000 hertz. I know there's a frequency here, again, 500, 676, uh, 0 0.1, you know, 35, 87. So what am I gonna choose for my sampling frequency and my basically my delta F in order to avoid signal aliasing and spectral leakage. Well, a thousand hertz is the maximum frequency of my signal. So my S of S has to be greater than two thousand hertz. And my delta F must be at least zero point one or the max at the most zero point one hertz because if I have a spacing of a zero point one hertz I'm gonna be able to hit this frequency and all the other frequencies eventually. So that's it. So again, if you're unlimited in terms of your DAP capability, these problems are a little bit, hopefully, uh, a little bit straightforward. Uh, and your DAC, DAC, not only the DAC capability to sample, but the DAC ability to gather data, data points. So more examples will be coming on that soon. Uh, so look forward to those. Look forward to on your problem set, and it will come on your exam as well. So we'll be uh, dealing, that, dealing with that a lot more. So uh, next time, we're going to finish up the second example for our uh, another example of discrete Fourier transforms. And that is going to be it for lecture uh, seven. I know we're moving uh, we're moving quickly beyond this, but uh, yeah, we're getting into it. An exam tool will be coming up, but more importantly, mechanics and some fun things are coming up soon as well. So I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.